to West Virginia Sports Connection. I'm your host, Tracy Abdella. Carl's taking a break this week. He's in Minnesota, but we came down to his old stomping grounds. We actually brought the show on the road. We're in Huntington. We're broadcasting to you from the Shuey Building at Joan C. Edwards Stadium. And my guests are from Marshall University. It's the Athletic Director, Mike Hamrick, and Assistant Athletic Director, Chuck McGill. Guys, thanks for so much for having us down. Great to have you here. Uh, get you here on our campus and our facilities. and get a good look here at Marshall University. It's, you know, it's a great facility, it's a great campus. Chuck and I had talked uh, uh, earlier before we started the show about some of the stuff I did years ago when we were covering events here when you had uh, Pennington and Moss and, and, and Coach Pruitt and it was such fun memories. I mean, I, I remember them just like they're yesterday and uh, Chuck and I were talking, I can't believe it's as long as it's been since it's been that time, but I'm not gonna say what year that was. So. Uh, I think it was probably 1998. Well, I guess you're going to date me, but okay, yeah, it was 98. It was 98. Listen, uh, when we came in, you know, when we strategize for this show or any show that we do, we have a, like a sheet and of stuff we want to talk about and things we want to go over. And then you kind of blew that up when we started first talking. And uh, it, it's something I, I really want to talk about. When Carl Lee came here as a freshman, right? You know, and we had talked about that on shows, and he and I have spoken about that numerous times. And uh, Sonny Randall, you know, they offered mm -hmm. him scholarship. Mm -hmm. um, you were the guy that showed him around. You were a senior then. Well, you know, Carl and I actually played together for a year. Uh, when, when Carl came in as a freshman, uh, it was Sonny Randall who had just gotten hired at Marshall. And what people, a lot of people don't know, Carl Lee was Sonny Randall's first ever recruit at Marshall. The first one? First one. First guy that came and visited. I met Carl on his uh, visit here to Marshall, showed him around a little bit, uh, South Charleston High School. and. Carl was a tall, six foot, six one, lanky. I don't think Carl was 160 pounds when he came on his <laughs> visit, and he was the first recruit for the Sonny Randall era. And then Carl came in that next fall. I was a senior. I was a, was the captain and uh, and played linebacker, outside linebacker. And Carl was the kind of the safety cornerback. I think he played a little more safety behind me. And 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 Carl and I became very close friends. But Tracy, I can tell you one thing about Carl. The minute he stepped on this campus. Uh, it didn't take it didn't take a genius to figure out that he could play in the NFL because he was special, and uh, so Carl's paying me for this, by the way. Of course, but, but Carl was special and he was a great player and and played here and we know we know his history in the NFL and and he, he was a he was a tremendous per, uh, person and a tremendous player. What was it that that you saw? I mean, you said you saw it right away, and and it being Randall's first recruit, what was it that said, hey man, this kid's got something? Well, first of all. Carl really cared about the game. He loved the game of football. And if you if you don't love football, you can't play college football this day and back in those days because it's too tough. It's too difficult. The time that our kids put in uh, anywhere in Division One college football is 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 so time consuming. It's hard. It's difficult. It's hard hard work, and you got to love it. Carl loved it, and so that was one thing. Carl was very smart, but Carl could run. The people what people didn't realize Carl was. Carl played, what, cornerback in the NFL 11, 12 years. you got to be able to turn and run. Carl could turn his hips and run as good as any player I've ever seen. And I've, I've been, this is my 29th year as a Division I A athletic director, uh, uh, going into my 10th year here at Marshall. And Carl just had it. You know, sometimes you just know when a kid had it. Randy Moss, you know when Randy Moss had it. <laughs> Uh, Chad Pennington had it, Byron Lefwich had it, Ahmad Bradshaw had it, and I'm talking about all the great Marshall players that have played here, Carl Lee had it. And this was back before Marshall got the notoriety that it got in the, in the 90s and in the 2000s and clear through you know, some of the players we have today. So, so Carl Lee had it. He had it, man. So you hear so often when, when you watch sports about that it factor, and, and that's, it sounds to me that that's what it. you're describing, it's, it is, is that it factor. It is. And nobody can ever seem to define what it is. It's just you know it when you see it. Well, I mean, you look out in the NFL, Tom Brady, it factor. Drew Brees, it factor. There's some of them, some players that have it and some don't. And the first time I, I saw Carl Lee play and – practice in a scrimmage, we all kind of looked and said, that freshman's going to play here as a freshman, and, and I'm proud of Carl. Carl, he, he's a great guy. We've developed a great friendship over the years, and I'm, and I'm honored that he's actually a co-host on this show. Chuck, I don't want to leave you out. Do you, I mean, you're too young to obviously remember what Carl was like and what he was playing at, but you saw him in the NFL, right? Saw him in the NFL. I was growing up, and, you know, I grew up on the west side of Charleston, so at that time, you know, 
we were looking at, you know, we had people like Dennis Hare come back and speak to us, you know, and Carl Lee, and there weren't many names at that time, you know, I didn't know of a Randy Moss yet, um, but not many names that time that we could link to Charleston that we knew went out and made it. So you looked at people like Carl and like Denny Hara, mm -hmm. uh, and Denny Hara spoke at my school when I was a kid. I remember it you know, vividly. Um, yeah, you remember those guys and, and they, hey, you know, not that I could ever get there, but you know, as a young kid, you're, you're always aspiring to be on that next level. And Carl was definitely one of those guys. You know, you talk about the West Side, Denny Hara, another great uh, Kanawha Valley football player from the West Side. You probably don't remember Ron McCartney that played for Stonewall Jackson that went to, I think Ron played at Tennessee and he was a couple years ahead of me, but I got to know Ron and, and uh, he played in NFL a long time. So there's a lot of good players come out out, out of the Canal Valley and I'm, I'm a little prejudiced to the Canal Valley being a <laughs> Herbert Hoover guy. I, I appreciate I mean, that. You know, I'm, I just, I'm a Canal well, Valley guy myself. Well, so there's some great players come out of there. All right, well, we got to take a commercial break. Don't go away. We're talking with Mike Hamrick and Chuck McGill from the Marshall University Athletic Department. We'll be right back. It's football season again, and Tony the Tailor has the perfect sportswear, outerwear, and footwear. Johnny O quarter zips and sports shirts, Bill's khakis, and boots from Allen Edmonds are what the smart people are wearing this season for game time and play time. We have a great selection in our downtown Charleston store, or shop at our new downtown Huntington location. Can't make it in? Shop online at bestmastertailor.com. Tony the Tailor, West Virginia's finest men's store. West Virginia Sports Connection is brought to you by Subway, Development of West Virginia, Greg Hammond. With promotional consideration from Sprague's Distributing Company. Yingling Golden Pilsner. Hendrickson and Long. Welcome back to West Virginia Sports Connection. We are coming to you from Jones C. Edwards Stadium inside the Suey Building, and we are with Mike Hamrick and Chuck McGill uh, from Marshall University. When we went out, we were talking about, you know, your playing days with Carl, but I, I want to switch to today's playing days, and specifically um, this week's game against Charlotte. And it's not just a game. It's what you all uh, refer to as the memorial game. Um, how, how does all that come about? Because we were talking in the break that when you were here, that was never really acknowledged because acknowledged it was still so recent. Well, it's a, it's a special game because it's the closest game to November 14th. Uh, and everyone, every Marshall fan, and, and most people know what happened November 14th, 1970, the tragic plane crash that uh, uh, took the lives of 75 people. So we take the football game closest to November 14th and we, we designate it or dedicate it as the memorial game where we will have a lot of special events and activities around it. And then obviously every year on November 14th at the Memorial Fountain in the middle of campus that's there to honor the 75 people that lost their lives, uh, we have a ceremony which sometimes, uh, Tracy, will have three, 4,000 people come and, uh, and we have a speaker and, and we pay tribute and honor the 75 people that lost their lives. Uh, our football team's there. They put roses on the fountain. Uh, like I said, we have great speakers. Actually, this year we have, have a young lady named Leslie Garvis, whose father was on the plane, not as a part of the Marshall family, but he was the charter coordinator who coordinated the whole entire charter. He lost his life. Uh, uh, Leslie had to have been in diapers, Chuck, huh? and she's going to come back and share her story. Uh, with everyone, and, and, and I, I'm fortunate enough and honored enough to be able to say a few words. Coach Holiday says a few words, the president, and it's really a special emotional weekend for the Marshall family. And whether, whether you, went to, you were here in 1970 or you graduated last year, this is a special time for the Marshall family. How did, how did these, you know, cause you said they didn't do it when you and, no, and Carl were here. No. How did this 
how did this yeah, come yeah, about? You, you know what? It's funny, and Carl, Carl and I talked about this, and I, I played here in the late 70s. I got here in 76. The plane crash was in 70, and it was still too painful for the Marshall family to talk about. Uh, there was nothing. It was ignored. Let's just let it go away, and at some point in the 80s, uh, somebody at Marshall said, hey, let's embrace this. This is who we are. This is, this is our, our fabric. And then obviously they, they started the memorial service and, and then in 2006 the movie We Are Marshall came out. Matthew McConaughey that told the story of how the football program was, was uh, brought back. But again, when I was here we, 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 we wanted to ignore the tragedy and now we don't ignore it, Tracy. We embrace it. It's who we are. It's, it's, it's our fabric. It brings Marshall people together. And, and again, you know, kind of the movie, uh, I was living in Las Vegas at the time. I was the athletic director at UNLV when the movie came out. And my wife and I, my wife's a Marshall graduate, we went to see the movie. And, and after we watched it, there were obviously tears in our eyes because I got here right afterwards and had some tough times playing football in the 70s. But we are Marshall. What a, what a great name, Chuck. I mean, how... You couldn't find anything better. Is that where that came from? Where, where, is that where that originated when yes, they started doing yes. that? It's there was never a We Are Marshall until the movie came out in 2006. And for those of uh, your, your viewers that watched the movie, I can tell you I, I got here right after. I heard a lot of stories. The movie was 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 a little Hollywood, like most movies are, you know, you got but it, it told the story that there was a difficult decision that had to be made. Does Marshall continue football or does it just stop? And there were people that wanted to discontinue football. When, when I played here in the late 70s, uh, we were not very good. It was hard to get the program back and there were people that wanted to discontinue the football program well into the 70s because of our lack of success and thank goodness someone had the vision to not do that. What a, what a you know, when you say rise from the ashes, there, there could be nothing more appropriate than that. And, uh, and talking to Chuck, so Conference USA sets, I guess, makes sure that you, you guys have a home game surrounding that date? Yeah, actually they do, yeah. Uh, actually we play home this weekend and we play home the following weekend. They actually gave us the week before and the week after for us, for us to choose you know when we would want to play the, or we want, would want to have the memorial game. But 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 Tracy, you, you know you you do this show. This is a sports show, and we talk about sports all the time. And I I am fortunate enough to get asked to come out and talk about Marshall and Marshall's story a lot. Being the director of athletics here, and and my speech always says Marshall football is the greatest comeback story ever in college. Think about it. Think about it. ever in college athletics, how many football programs were totally destroyed and came back the next year and was 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 the winningest program in the 90s, uh, were the winningest program, or first or second winningest program in this stadium, were the winningest bowl program in college football with an 11 and 2 record Chuck. Sounds right. and and coach Holiday is is <coughs> is the winningest bowl coach with five games or more he's 5 and 0 oh. so you talk about how many coaches can say that no no and I kid him I I'm, I'm 6 and 0 oh here in bowl games so <laughs> I want to throw that in on your show but but you think about it you think about it Tracy a comeback story there's nothing more better than comeback than Marshall football from tragedy, from ashes, from a plane that flew into the hillside that you, there's, there's six bodies up on that hill behind us that you couldn't, couldn't be identified in a memorial. And, but anyway, it, that's what makes this weekend and, and next week the 14th so special. Chuck, when you, when you left Charleston and you came down here and worked here, how much of the mystique of Marshall brought you down here? What, what brought you here to Marshall? Well, you know, I, I started to cultivate a relationship with Mike uh, when I was the Marshall beat writer from 2009 to 2011, which was his first year. It was my first year back in West Virginia in sports media, his first year back as the athletic director. So we were kind of starting anew to, uh, together and we developed that relationship. But what I came to know from being around Mike, you know, we use the hashtag on social media, herd family. Um, and that became very apparent to me that this was a place that kind of fostered that idea. 
Um, so when, in 2016, when I had the opportunity to come down here, it was pretty much a no-brainer because I could work with Mike and the people that Mike had hired. Um, I had a wife uh, who was in the media business who could come down here, but also had a, a young son who I could raise in a college environment uh, that kind of embraced that herd family and that family concept. And all of this, all of, of what Marshall Athletics is, has become part of our family. Uh, and that's why this weekend in particular, even though I didn't have someone who I lost, you know, I, I was born in 1980s, I was born 10 years after the crash, I didn't know anyone in the crash, I'm not from Huntington, I didn't go to Marshall University, but so much of it is now part of the McGill family because it all becomes personal to you in some way. You know, my son is six years old and at his elementary school there are multiple people who lost people in the crash. He knows what it is. He's very aware of it. He understands what happened. Uh, it means something to him. And so when you go to this, this fountain ceremony on November 14th, you're surrounded by people who are different ways. It's, it's a fabric of your being once you're here, once you're part of the Marshall family. Uh, so that's why we call it sons and daughters of Marshall. You're one forever, no matter you know, how you got there. Uh, and that's, that's what Marshall means to me. And that's, I mean, that's what's such a, a meaningful place to work is it's just, it, it is, it's bigger than, than you know, it, our student athletes are important, our coaches are important, the athletic administration, our fans, everybody's so important and so key to what we do, uh, but it's still bigger than sports because of what happened here and, and, and how it impacts your life forever. That's, um, that's an awesome story, man. Listen, I'm going to take that opportunity. We're going to take another commercial break. Don't go away. We're talking with uh, Mike Hamrick and Chuck McGill from Marshall University. We'll be right back. It's football season again, and Tony the Tailor has the perfect sportswear, outerwear, and footwear. Johnny O quarter zips and sports shirts, Bill's khakis, and boots from Allen Edmonds are what the smart people are wearing this season for game time and play time. We have a great selection in our downtown Charleston store, or shop at our new downtown Huntington location. Can't make it in? Shop online at bestmastertailor.com. Tony the Tailor, West Virginia's finest men's store. West Virginia Sports Connection is brought to you by Subway, Development of West Virginia, Greg Hammond. With promotional consideration from Sprigs Distributing Company. Yingling Golden Pilsner. Hendrickson and Long. Welcome back to West Virginia Sports Connection. We are coming to you from Jones C. Edwards Stadium inside the Suey Building, and we're talking with Mike Hamrick and Chuck McGill uh, from the Marshall University football program, or athletic program, I should say. In the football and, building. And, yeah, that's right, in the football building. And listen, if you like, uh, the show's going to be a great show. They've got some fantastic stories. You can check us out. Uh, it'll be this Thursday on Network West Virginia at 530, also on Facebook, on YouTube, on iTunes, and on our website at wvsportsconnection.com. All right, guys, now that i got the plugs out of the way, um, we were talking, you know, going into the break about, you know, what this weekend means. Now, you've also, you guys have also invited a bunch of players back. Um, so, what commitments do you have and what exactly is going to happen in that ceremony? Well, what, what will happen is uh, our football team will wear their all black uniforms. They only wear that one time a year. Uh, we don't wear our black jerseys except on the Memorial Weekend. And, and we will show about a four minute video on the video board that will kind of uh, highlight and summarize what happened from November 17th to today. And then our football uh, team will come out for the game and they'll be arm and armed. And we've invited all our former football players to be on the field and join our football team and walk out arm in arm. And it goes back to what Chuck said, it's family. The, the, the thing about Marshall, Tracy, that, that is so great is we're, we're not the big dog in the state, you know, we're kind of the underdog, we're the, 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 the university that, that stick, has to stick together to be successful and that's why the family, family concept is so big here at Marshall and we're trying to embrace each other 
uh, this weekend. And, and uh, so we've got many of our former players coming back. They'll be here with our guys, and, and uh, it'll be a touching weekend here at, uh, in Huntington. Do you have, uh, can, can, can you give us a scoop on who might be coming back? Well, I'll be here. <laughs> Chuck? Well, we've got a lot of guys. Yeah, we've got all areas. We, we've got all areas. Areas. Uh, we got. Uh, uh, you know, we got. It's it's funny. We get a lot of guys back from the Young Thundering Herd, and we don't talk enough about the Young Thundering Herd. Those are the guys that played 71, 72, 73, 74. Those are the guys that put the program back together. That. Uh, actually won two games, Tracy, the year after the crash with all freshmen and, and guys who had been hurt and the Reggie Oliver quarterback. And, and uh, a lot of the young Thundering Herd guys continue to come back because some of them were, were here when the plane crashed and, and uh, they lost a lot of friends. You know, can you imagine having, having lunch with one of your best buddies you play football with and you say, See you later, man. Go win that football game at, at East Carolina. And then the next Saturday night at 9 o'clock, you hear a rumor that, that the plane has crashed and, and you'll never see that guy again. I mean, I that even imagine. was difficult on so many people. And uh, we grieve. We grieve over it. But it's what, like I said, it's the fabric that holds this university this community and the Marshall family together. You know, when I was young, younger, and uh, not that I'm old, but when I was younger and covering these these games, it always felt like there was, now they, they were highly successful at that point. Cause yeah. they, you know, they'd come off the national championship in Division II and, uh, and, and Michael Payton and, um, you know, and then you, you get Chad comes in, I remember as a, as a freshman, it, what is it, like third or fourth on the depth chart and through yeah. injuries, he, yeah. he rises and it just always felt like there was something special you know, obviously you won a lot, but it wasn't just the winning. It just, is that what it is? Is it just sure. the, the whole community is together? Because sure. it felt different. I'd covered stuff in Notre Dame and WVU sure. and all kinds of things, but it just felt you, different you, here. You know what, and, and I'm a native West Virginian. I grew up in West Virginia, uh, the Canal Valley, uh, went to school at Marshall, played football here, moved away for 30 years, came back 10 years ago to finish my career and, and, and live in in West Virginia, so I'm a West Virginian. But you look at a school like WVU and they get great support, but a lot of their support, their people didn't go to school there. They're West Virginians and, and that's good, that's okay. The people who support Marshall, 99% of them, 98% of them went to school here who are, are Marshall graduates and they've been on this campus for a long time and they know our story and you know you go to Ohio State and, and a lot of schools and a, not, a, not that large of percentage of people that support those schools went to school there but Marshall it's close to almost a hundred percent you go through these stands and ask people why are you why are you here supporting Marshall University why well, went to school here you don't get that at other universities. So that makes it, you know, it may, winning helps, like you said. You know, Randy Moss and Chad Pennington and Byron Leftwich and, and Ahmad Bradshaw helps, but when, when your fan base all went to school here and has experienced the campus and the community, it makes you a little bit tighter as a family. At least that's, I mean. Yeah, well, you look around our athletic department, you know, Mike obviously played here and came back. Uh, Doc Holliday you know, grew up down the road. Our men's basketball coach, Dan D'Antoni, played here. Uh, we just hired a, a swimming and diving coach who was an assistant here a few years ago, left and, and came back. Uh, our men's soccer coach, Chris Grassi, who had success at University of Charleston, was a graduate assistant here and came back. Just, uh, our golf coach, Matt Grove, is the son of Jim Grove, who was an assistant coach here. You know, people come here and Huntington gets in them and Marshall gets in them and they come back and they stay around for a long time. And I think that's, the, that's where you can look around and you see that people who have stuck around or come back, went somewhere else and come back, they know it's because it's a special place. Look, we could talk on this topic for hours, Absolutely. but you, you touched on something that I wanted to get to. Also, you talked about Dan D'Antoni yep. and, and the basketball season's getting ready to open tonight, right? Yeah, we opened tonight. tonight. Yeah. So um, what was it like last year? I mean, it had been, what, 17, 20 years since they had been? 31. Uh, 31. 31. Yeah. Good gravy. Yeah, old, I'm, I'm telling my age because I remember when they were in it before. <laughs> uh, but what an exciting setup. And I'll tell you what, the NCAA doesn't do a lot right in that tournament in matchups. But, boy, did they ever get it right 
when they set it up that if West Virginia won and Marshall won, they would play each other. Such success. You know, you, you know where I work in Charleston, sure. right? I, I run a Delphi Sports Bar and Grill. There was such a Marshall crowd that first game. Mm -hmm. It was phenomenal, and yeah. it was such a great game. What has that – how has, is that going to propel basketball at Marshall University? Well, well first of all, it's, it's, we've never won an NCAA tournament basketball game in the history of Marshall basketball. We won our first one when we beat – uh, the what the number Which, four seed Wichita, Wichita State, State yeah. we were the thirteenth seed so that's big that's a start we think we're going to have a very good basketball team this year it's full of West Virginia kids you know John Elmore's a Charleston kid C J Burke's a Panhandle kid uh, Gerard, Gerard West is a uh, Bridgeport Clarksburg kind of guy Rondell Watson Rondell Watson's a Greenbrier County kid so we got a lot of West Virginia kids on our team which really helps. Uh, is a great appeal to to our fans uh, but we play an exciting brand of basketball but that did tremendous things for our basketball program and you know we we were we were the hunter a year ago now we're the hunted now <laughs> which sometimes is not good but that is good and that's it kind of your expectations right your expectations and that's kind of what we've been in football I mean People look at our football program over the years and say it's a very highly successful program. I told people that last year uh, there were eight schools that won a bowl game and won a first round NCAA basketball game. Eight schools. Notre Dame, Michigan State, Purdue, Duke, Ohio State, uh, I'm missing a couple more, and Marshall. There were eight of them. And we were one of the eight. So our pro we have a legitimate, successful program here that's recognized on a national basis. And uh, But basketball has just added so much to what, what we're doing here. And our people are excited about basketball season, and, and they're, they're still excited about football. We still have a chance to win our division if we can win out. You know, we, we, we messed up a little bit last weekend, but, uh, you know, I believe this team will get right back on the right track. Listen, guys, as always happens when I do these shows, we run out of time, and we're out of time now. But please, can we come back down? Will you, will you guys be back on our show? Absolutely. And this time I promise, next time I promise you, Carl will be here. Good. He'll, 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 you know, he's, How he's about some chicken wings catching. from uh, Art, Art Delphia? Well, well, we'll just see what we can do about that, all right? <laughs> hey, listen, um, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, you can check us out on Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, our website at wvsportsconnection.com, and uh, on Network West Virginia. And if you like what you see, we're always looking for sponsors. You can find the information on our website. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.